Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the show. The Atheist Experience is live February 15th, 2004. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perry, my co-host, as always. And uh, pretty day today for a change. Yes. For the last few. Yes. Snow and sleet and ice. Yes. So it's a, a good day to be here. Um, we appreciate you joining us. This show is sponsored, as always, by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. The ACA uh, is still working out where we're going to have our weekly meetings. Hot Jumbo Bagels, as you know, sort of closed uh, all at once, and um, we're, so we're trying to settle on where we're going to meet. Uh, so it, it, at this point, it's sort of a, on a week-by-week -week basis uh, we find out uh, where the weekly meetings are going to be, and apparently next Sunday it's going to be at a place called Posse East. And uh, you know where that is, Ashley? It's uh, San Jacinto, and I keep wanting to say Duval, but... Well, oh, it is? Aha! Uh -huh. okay. Duval in San Jacinto. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Uh, so that's, that's next Sunday at about 10.30, and you know, uh, in, until, we, until we work out a regular place, it's, this is just going to be announced on a week-by-week -week basis. So... Um, so that happens uh, just uh, the regular weekly meetings, except for, of course, the third Sunday of every month when we have our lecture series at the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. Now, today being the, the third Sunday of February, uh, we had our lecture today. Speaker was Don, which I regret missing uh, because I really want to see it. Don Baker spoke on the yep. subject of morality. Yes, and, morality and Christianity. Yeah, I'm uh, on that for a sec. How ended up being a good lecture. Um, started off basically just what is morality, mm -hmm. where does it come from, how can there be a secular morality and such, mm -hmm. and then went into religion's response to how do they define morality, how do they come up with morality, and what are the shortcomings of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a pretty good lecture. Uh, he's actually going to be on the show next week. Oh, okay. Uh, most likely talking about that. All right. So we might have a little recap on that next week. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's been a kind of a there's been a slugging match going on on the Ask an Atheist mailing list okay. recently on the subject of morality. Um, we have several internet mailing lists that people can subscribe to, and we have one called Ask an Atheist, which theists are allowed to join up and <clears throat> throw questions at us. And uh, we had this one theist um, really getting into it with a couple of our members, Jeff D. and mm -hmm. I think Stephen Rogers were. They were debating with, you know, of course, he was taking this notion that uh, morality is absolute and it must have supernatural sources. And, yes. And, and, and uh, Jeff and Stephen were really doing a good job of sort of drawing him out and pinning him down on various things he didn't want to be pinned down on. So it's an interesting thread to follow. Yeah. Um, but it's, it certainly does seem to be a, a big issue with them. So. Uh, so that was today's lecture. And next month, our lecturer is going to be Alan Campbell, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we don't know his topic yet, but uh, as soon as we do... We'll tell you. Uh, other regular uh, events, uh, just uh, so gatherings that ACA has, of course, are Godless Gamers, which is every Monday night at about 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser, and ACA Happy Hour, which takes place every Thursday evening at Antonio's Tex-Mex near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. The Nonprofits is our bi-weekly internet radio show hosted by Jeff D. and Russell Glasser and whoever else is there at Russell's house. Um, <laughs> Just that day, uh, pitches in. It's uh, 90 minutes of uh, news analysis and current events and yelling back and forth, and it's a great deal of fun to listen to. And there is an interactive uh, JavaScript chat room feature if you uh, listen to the live MP3 stream at atheistnetwork.com, which is where the show plays every other Saturday at 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, the most recent episode was yesterday. I don't know if uh, Russell has put the, uh, the file up on our website yet for yesterday's show, but you can listen to about the last half dozen or so shows uh, at the ACA website at atheist-community.org on the radio show page. And so the next uh, episode, I guess, will be two Saturdays from now, the 28th. Yep, 28th. Right? Yeah. And this is a leap year. There are 29 days yes. in February this month. So, all right. Okay, and last but not least, um, this uh, University Atheists and Agnostics uh, have a, the, we, we've had a bit of trouble uh, communicating with them. Uh, evidently, they have this uh, website URL that we didn't know about, uanda.com, um, and that's where uh, apparently they're putting up new meeting information and what have you. Um, this is a registered UT student organization, so if you're a UT student or faculty member and you're looking for a club for atheists and unbelievers, uh, well, they're the folks to get in touch with. So visit that URL uh, if you're so inclined and find out more about youth, university atheists and agnostics. Okay, 
Uh, so that does it for the announcements. So we welcome you to the show. We're here every week at 4.30 p.m. If you, this is the first time that you've ever watched us, uh, Atheist Experience, we've been on the air about six years now. Um, we are a live call-in show. We take calls from uh, viewers, uh, theists, uh, uh, atheists alike. Um, get some often very interesting discussions going on. But if you're a very first, if you're this is the very first time you've ever seen the show, if you're just channel surfing and you've bumped into us, visit our website at atheist-community.org. That's where you can find out more information about the group. And we also have a fact page on the website, uh, frequently asked questions. That's where we have assembled the most common questions. Right there uh, is the website on your screen. Uh, we've assembled the most common questions that atheists tend to get from believers uh, in general, and certainly the ones that we have gotten most commonly on this program over the years, and we've assembled them into a fact page. So if, uh, if you're a first-time viewer to the show and uh, you're puzzled and curious about atheism, why not visit that page first? Because chances are we've already answered your question. But if not, uh, later on in the program we'll start taking live calls like we do every Sunday, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, also note that uh, this is the, there are uh, reruns of this show that play Tuesdays on this channel at 4.30 p.m. And we also uh, have a viewer feedback address. TV at atheist-community.org is your viewer feedback address to write us letters. Ask us questions if you don't manage to get on the air. It usually transpires at the end of a show that there's about you know, one or two people still hanging on the line. And so if you try to call us up and you don't get through, that email address right there at the bottom of your screen is where you can write us and ask us questions. And we answer everything we get, and the really good ones, we'll try to bring them on the air and read them out on the air. All right? So without further ado, over to Ashley for the news Okay. today. It's actually kind of been a... Big, busy news week. Oh, well, yeah. yes, some significant stories. Yeah. Um, mostly on the good side, thankfully. Um, but we're going to get to those a little bit later. Um, <laughs> Bad news first. Yes. <laughs> we're eternal optimists on this show. Get the hard stuff out mm -hmm. first. Um, Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. This is a rather common story. We've had this several times before. Mm -hmm. The State Board of Education gave preliminary approval Tuesday to a 10th grade biology lesson that states uh, that scientists say could put intelligent design in Ohio classrooms. Setting aside an impassioned plea from the National Academy of Sciences, the board voted 13 to 4 to declare its attempt to adopt the critical analysis of, analysis of evolution. Um, Academy warned that doing so would give a green light to teaching intelligent design. Um, it's a sad day for science in Ohio, said Patricia Pricehouse, who teaches biological evolution at uh, a university. This opens up the, re the reputation of Ohio scientists to ridicule nationally and internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, board member, oh uh, yeah, board member James Turner of Cincinnati, who who supported the lesson plan, said he believes some members of the scientific community were overreacting. I think this is a case of passion lacking perspective. Um, I reject the notion that this lesson somehow advances the notion of intelligent design or creationism. Well, that's, that was the line now, that they had at the textbook hearings. Yes. Here last fall. <laughs> as a simple snapshot uh -huh. of history, I would uh -huh. agree with that. Yeah. Simply saying that, you know, look, evolution explains a lot, but there's a couple things that we still don't know, mm -hmm. or here's something that doesn't explain all that well. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. However, there, this, this is all posted on the Internet called the wedge strategy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What they plan on doing is start... Mm -hmm. by saying that there are little problems, mm -hmm. and hey, look, we have an answer to these. It's just some unknown force, mm -hmm. just some kind of intelligence. It's not God. It's not Christianity. Don't yeah. worry about that. It's, yeah. it's nothing like that. Yeah, we're not trying to promote our religion or anything. Exactly, exactly. We're, we're not pushing any kind of God here. <laughs> we're just, there's got to be some intelligence behind it. And then a few years after, you can start teaching that. The intelligence yeah. say, well, now the intelligence, hmm, yeah. Christianity That's right. That's what they want to do is whittle away the most the intelligent of them. Whittle away so, bit by bit exactly. until they, they just you know get that mistrust of exactly. accepted Start putting science. more and more and more in there. Yeah. So yeah. now if this were it's you know wedge. an honest scientific analysis of evolution mm -hmm. and its problems and you know where where are there are things that we still don't know which there are areas of like that in every science under the sun so far, mm -hmm. then there's no big problem with that. But again, they're going to be using this as yeah. a wedge to try and get more and more and more stuff in and more and more science out. Yeah, right. And I mean, the only, the only challenges to valid science education in the public schools in regards to biology and what have you are motivated by religious ideologues. Exactly. Right? There's, there's no one out there in the National Academy of Sciences or anybody out there is saying, oh, okay, um, we have a legitimate, scientifically valid exactly. gripe 
against teaching this. Exactly. And so because of that, we think that uh, this should be you know, yeah. this should be uh, you know taught in it's, a different way. It's solely the domain yeah. of people of people who don't like the implications. Yeah. Of evolution that are saying that it's now got all these problems to it. It's not scientists yeah, it's, who are saying it's, it's got a problem. It's people who have an ick factor. Yeah, no, so. it's 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 religious fundamentalists. This yeah. is this is purely religiously motivated. Yeah. and you know, it's you know, it, in textbook in, in the Texas textbook hearings. Yes, yeah, you know, they were more or less soundly uh, knocked out of the running. Uh, Georgia has recently strengthened its science curriculum. As okay. a result of their little goofy flap a couple weeks ago. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, but the the uh, the ID crowd, you know, the fundamentalists, just won't quit, right? Yeah. Because yeah. this to them, this is this is a threat to their religious beliefs. Yeah. And uh, you know, they'll just it's like playing whack a mole. You know, you knock one down and they <laughs> pop up over here. So it's. Uh, yeah. It's really difficult to <laughs> whack an idea. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's the current. So unfortunately, again, f voted thirteen to four. But you, you know the, the 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 teachers who are being interviewed, the teacher the teachers know what's what. Yeah, you know. We are, hope. are they are they are they we facing hope. are they facing firing if they don't teach this stupid new curriculum? I, mean, um, if I, I, biology, I didn't see anything about that. Yeah, I mean, if I were a biology so. teacher in in if I were if I were that woman who had just been interviewed saying this is stupid, yes. this is crazy, I'd keep teaching my class the way I always had. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if they wanted to introduce some sort of thing into the curriculum saying, but it could have been the invisible magic pink space pixie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have you know, if it's wrong, I don't have to teach it. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm the one with the degree in the field, exactly. not these school board people. Exactly. Yeah. These school so. board people were just voted in. They could have been yeah. auto mechanics or something. They don't so know. at this meeting apparently Soccer tempers models. were very, very high. Well, of course they are. There was yeah. there was lots and lots of debate. Mm -hmm. Very heated some of it. Yeah. Um, I think they were saying that they had to, uh, the debate about the lesson plan rose to such a fevered pitch this week mm -hmm. that the board's president uh, took the extraordinary step of admonishing her colleagues against attacking one another or members of the public. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, right, Apparently so if this, if this were just a scientific discussion, you wouldn't have that kind exactly. of temper exactly. flaring. Exactly. Uh, what, what happened here at the school board hearings, uh, the textbook hearings back in September, there were a couple of really interesting incidents, and one of which was uh, several people who spoke out in favor of teaching accurate science were Christians. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and there was one, in fact, one very eloquent young woman who uh, ac who had the unenviable task of following Steven Weinberg oh, yeah. in the uh, you know, order of yeah. speakers. But she was this uh, student from Rice. She was a graduate student at Rice. Okay. And uh, announced herself as this extremely devout Christian and then went on to say that this kind of thing doesn't belong in science class, that science is one thing and her religious faith is another thing yeah. and that evolution doesn't present any problems to her. She was immediately pounced on by Terry Leo, who is the fundamentalist Christian yeah. uh, person on the school board, uh, yeah. on the uh, State Board of Education. I, I gotta make those distinctions clear, the SBOE here, yeah. uh, who had arranged this whole sort of thing in such a exactly. way to where the creationists got all the media attention, yeah. Yeah. Um, arranged to have people like Dembski and, and Jonathan Wells flown in and what have you. Yeah. And so she was really trying to, uh, unsuccessfully it turned out, stack the deck, yeah. as it were, in favor of intelligent design. Yeah. Uh, but Terry Leo pounced on this woman. It's like, well, how can you be? Basically inferring, no, implying, I'm sorry. The speaker implies, the listener infers. Implying <laughs> that uh, she, she couldn't hold those views and be a proper Christian. She couldn't accept wow. evolution and be wow. didn't, didn't state it outright. So you have the person who's on the outright. state board of education saying you're not a true Christian. No, she didn't say that, right? Well, she, well, she didn't yeah, say it outright, but but, but the implication was extremely clear. Yeah. That's uh, it was, it was you're just, just not a good Christian. I, I don't see how you can. The, this seems contrary to me. How yes. can you agree with this and hold your religious views the way you do? And she and and the girl, you know, <laughs> uh, explained herself. I thought you know fairly eloquently. Yeah. For having what I think is not a tenable position, but she at least demonstrated that yeah. you know not all Christians are these anti-science fundamentalists. Exactly, nuts, wackos. So, um, but there was another incident where uh, a, a Baptist minister spoke. Yes, and he uh, spoke in favor of not having creationism, intelligent design, and science yes. curriculum. He said, "This yes. isn't science, what have you." And this minister had. The Discovery Institute had attempted, apparently, to contact him in advance of the hearings. Yeah. 
and have him I, speak for I their guess song. he didn't return their calls or something. And so after he gave his thing out in the lobby of the building, it, th three or four Discovery Institute guys, uh, you know, harangued him. Yeah. You know, verbally called him nasty names. Yeah. Um, and this was witnessed by Jeff Jones, our co-chair, and a few, yeah. other, and Samantha Smoot with the Texas Freedom Network, and a few other people. I mean, it was pretty public. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was, it was pretty wild. It was pretty out of hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, but but all of that emotionalism comes from their side, right? Exactly. Because they're the ones who have this um, fragile fundamentalist dogma to protect. Exactly. So, uh, you yeah. know, science. Right. Scientists, scientists just say, typically don't get that emotional about their arguments. <laughs> Here's the, well, they can be, right? <laughs> they can I mean, be, science, yes. Scientists can oh, get very passionate definitely. about things. But, but, you know, scientists can just say, look, where are the peer-reviewed papers? Yeah. yeah. There aren't it, yeah. so. Show us the um, evidence. We'll go along with you. Right. So. so it remains to be seen if, uh, but, but it does show this yeah, increasing, uh, this yeah. can be tied in very well to our next article, I bet you. To our next one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm missing the linkage, but okay. Well, I'll um, tell you what it is if you were to just read the damn... Come on. We're, we're okay, fine. Uh, Seoul, North Cor or South Korea. Yeah. Um, South Korean researchers reported Thursday that they have created human embryos through cloning and extracted embryonic stem cells. Mm -hmm. uh, the findings... Hey, Korea. Uh, the findings by a team of researchers led by Dr. Huang Wo Suk of uh, Seoul National University were presented to South Korean scientist and we published in the US Journal of Science. The paper describes a detailed process of how to create human embryos by cloning, saying the scientists use egg donation, eggs donated by Korean women. The, te the technique, scientists say, was not designed to make babies, but to further understand the process known as therapeutic cloning. Okay. Um, possible treatment for a, uh, a possible treatment for a multitude of diseases. Mm -hmm. Um, advances in stem cell technology have been hailed as holding potential cures for many crippling illnesses such as diabetes, spinal cord injuries, and Parkinson's. Um, what else here? Yeah, stem cells, basically what happened? They figured out how to clone a human embryo. They did that. When it starts dividing, they take some of the stem cells out of that, and then they can use the stem cells for whatever research. Mm -hmm. You can find stem cells in adults, mm -hmm. but they're much rarer. They're much harder to get to. And typically, they're not as good for research as ones that come from an embryo. So that's, that's kind of the breakthrough here. Now, they are saying that any kind of therapeutic cloning or research or anything like that, or therapies, are years away. This is something where they've managed to do this, mm -hmm. but that's basically the end of it. It is yeah. not a practical. Well, it's the first step. Right? Exactly. This, um, what they have right here is not a practical thing. Not yet, but exactly. they, they have. There have been. They've. They've. Uh, stem cells have grown like new heart tissue in mice. Yeah. So we know that it can be it done. Now can we be just done. Have to it just takes a little work. But that's what. Out. That's what science does. Right? Exactly. I mean, it's research took exactly. a lot of work to get the polio vaccine. Exactly. Took a lot of work to get the penicillin. Stuff exactly. Like that. Exactly. Um, now, how this ties into the previous is in that the more and more science education is undermined in America. Yeah. by fundamentalists. We are going to find ourselves in a situation in this country where in about 20 years we are this scientific and intellectual third world country. Yes. We will be as dependent on foreign countries for our medicines uh, and things like that as we are right now on our oil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are going to be dependent because our scientists aren't going to, they're not going to be taught this stuff. Yeah. Uh, they're, not going to be, they're not going to be presented with the educational opportunities yeah. unless they study overseas. And they're not going to be presented with the research opportunities. Yeah. Uh, is it, whoever comes up with a cure for AIDS and a cure for cancer yeah. and a cure for Parkinson's and a cure for Alzheimer's uh, and yeah. a cure for any other sort of degenerative crazy disease that you might come up with, anybody who ever comes up with a legitimate life extension technology, yeah. you, I bet you even money right now, that's not going to be an American. Yeah. yeah. just isn't. You know, it's uh, yeah. if this trend towards exactly. uh, if the undermining trend science, continues, yeah. undermining science in this country, uh, based on religious fundamentalism, continues. Yeah, it's yeah. very worrying. Yeah. You know, we're going to be, and of course, <laughs> Korea. I mean, if if Korea is the place we have to go to, you know, to to get the yeah. medicine that's going to cure mom yeah. of her 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 uh, MS yeah. or her her Parkinson's or yeah. what have you, <laughs> they can just charge whatever they want. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. like hmm, okay. Well, let's see. That'll be uh, is it ten thousand dollars for the yeah. first treatment. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then twenty thousand dollars for the second treatment. And they can just, you know, they can just. We can just be held 
economic hostage. Yeah, yeah. Like we have been for so many years, I think, with our oil. And what are we going to do? Are we going to invade South Korea like we did Iraq? <laughs> you know, invaded take Iraq over to get pharmacies. their oil. Yeah, so. <laughs> we're going to invade South Korea to take over their... Oh, yeah. no, they have a, a, a WMD program. Right, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. March in there, and we'll just happen to take these pharmacies to get what yeah. we need. Yeah, so. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, this is technology that, yes, there are definitely things <laughs> that we don't know about. There are definitely yeah. limitations to it right now. We should not mm -hmm. be, you know, jumping forward as fast as we can, possibly can to say, you know, let's create new babies by cloning. Yeah. There are big problems. With I don't it. think anyone. Yeah, I don't think anyone's um, promoting but, that really. But yeah, one except the aliens. One, right? people aren't promoting that. Yeah. You know, we do this for reproductive reasons. Uh -huh. And two, um, like say that that's years ahead. And this is knowledge that, again, you have to get out there. We we can do a lot of stuff with this with this kind of technology, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that we should look into and when we should work on with caution, of course. Sure, but we should be looking into yeah, it. Yeah, you should always be so. mindful of ethical issues. But of course, there's always there's always a way that mm -hmm. science can go wrong. And how many how many embryos things, or how many embryos are discarded and thrown away at fertility clinics? And, exactly, and, you know, various places. Exactly, on a daily basis. Yeah. So, couldn't they be used to help cure Parkinson's? Mm. So right. Well, they're putting it to the current administration. No. Uh huh. So, right. So, so anyway, uh, now they do also say that even in Korea. This is obviously sparking huge debates over whether or not we should be banning this, you know, cloning technology out. Banning human cloning, period, everywhere, for, yeah. for any kind of reason. And that's the X factor. Um, right. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah. And even in Korea, they're having, you know, they're having a lot of incidents now where, you know, they're, they're attacking the scientists and whatnot in certain ways to try and stop them. Hmm. So, so, yeah, unfortunately, there is a backlash, but, but again, there, there's no scientific reason for a backlash. So, yeah, so people have seen too many science fiction movies. Exactly, they're afraid that you know that we're going to try and you know resurrect Hitler or something <laughs> like that. Even if you so. did, right, he wouldn't be Hitler, right? Exactly. I, I mean, mean, a person's personality. There's a lot of is, upbringing and everything that yeah. comes along with something. Yeah, all you're so. doing, you know, you're, you're making a, a genetic copy of an individual, but that doesn't mean that individual is going to be the same person. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Promote the same things or whatever. And again, so. why? Uh, why isn't it? Why, is, why don't the the anti cloning people ever think? Oh well, you know, you can create an army of 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 Gandhis or no. <laughs> people. It's yes. always oh you no, your Hitlers will create our Gandhis. Oh no, there's they're, you're gonna they're gonna they could clone Hitler. They can make this army of Hitlers, or they can make all these. You know, there could be a million Osama bin Ladens running around the world, all yeah. cloned. Yeah. Why is it never? Nah. Uh, Einstein. Why is it never Florence Nightingale? You know. Why is it, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it never, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's always, you know, it's the only objections you ever hear to these technologies are from the, you know, the Luddites, the people who are afraid of these yeah. advancements, and they're afraid of it for religious reasons, yeah. and, you know, they, I think in, in surveys, the people have stated, uh, you know, the, the, their main objections to cloning are usually rooted in religious beliefs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or any sort of, sort of, sort of life, ex uh, biotechnology, uh, yeah. life extension, what have you, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Again, and this is why I think America in, in the 21st century is going to fall behind the rest of the world in a lot of advancements. Yeah. I don't think we're going to lead the world the way we did in like the second half of the 20th century yeah. Yeah. for very long yeah. Yeah. if things keep going the way they're going. Yeah. So we can hopefully change that tide, but we'll see. Well. Uh, and the final story. This is in Denton, Florida. Um, Eckerd Corporation has fired three pharmacists who, de who declined to fill an emergency contra contraception prescription for a woman who had been raped. Uh, Gene Eyre, 33, of, uh, of Denton, said he and two co-workers were fired on January 29th, six days after refusing to fill the prescription. Eyre said he declined to fill the prescription for the so-called morning-after pill because he believes it could have killed the embryo if the woman had already conceived. Though he had declined, though he, now this is what gets me, yeah. though he had declined five or six times in the past to fill such prescriptions, this was the first time he had been handed one for a rape victim. So he's done this several times before. Yeah. This is just the first time for a rape victim. Um, uh, I went, yeah, again, I went to the back room and prayed briefly about it. So there you yeah. go who had worked for Eckerd for five years. I actually called my pastor, who has nothing to do with this. Yeah. It's none of his freaking business. At Denton Bible Church and asked him what he thought about it. Well, who cares what he thinks about it? Unless he's involved with this in some way, yeah. he has no say. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. The two other pharmacists who were Just there... Just got to stick their nose in everybody's yeah. business. Who were present at the time were? also declined to fill the prescription. Mm -hmm. um, the right victim got a prescription at a nearby pharmacy. Right. But, uh, yeah, Gallagher said... Now, again, this is something that I mm -hmm. kind of expected. Eckerd's employment manual says pharmacists are not allowed to opt out of filling a prescription for religious, moral, or ethical reasons. Huh. Um, and he's claiming that he just didn't know about this policy, which is possible. Yeah, but I'm, just, I'm glad they have such a policy. Exactly. I mean, and they responded appropriately. They can't his butt. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Which is which is perfectly right thing to do. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, you don't have the right to impose your will on somebody else for something like this. Yeah. Not for something like rape, at least. Yeah. Or just just at all, right? At yeah, all. I mean, for any reason. This this medication is yeah. a, is legal. Yes. Okay? Yeah. If someone walks in and says, please fill this prescription, if you're the pharmacist, you do it. Yeah. It's your job. Yeah. Yeah. No? But apparently, if you've got your invisible friend, yeah. then you can, you know, decide See? That's not it. To they, do they think that they can just, you so, know, not. Yeah. Well, the, so. so, and they're jobless, and they should be, and that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that they find it very, very hard to get a job filling prescriptions anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's just completely inappropriate. Yeah. So, so I, I've, I've heard, I, gosh, what, I don't know that I remember the name, but there, there are conservative politicians right now mumbling about the, this, this uh, morning after pill. Yeah. Uh, saying that, oh, well, maybe this is a thing that shouldn't exist because this goes against our, our, our push towards like having abstinence education and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, you know, it's not just all about 14-year-old girls, okay? Married yeah. women yeah. Want to have, you know, should have the morning after pill. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, they're just, they're just so, they have such tunnel vision. Yeah. And it's yeah. crazy. Boy, I mean, just. And abstinence, you know, is a great idea. I'm all for it. <laughs> well. But the well, failure rate of abstinence is fairly high. <laughs> and if you rely on it and say that, you know, you shouldn't uh -huh. have sex because. Well, the failure rate of abstinence, like, is like when people stop being abstinent, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, because if you stay abstinent, there's no exactly, failure, right? exactly. <laughs> the failure rate is just about 100 percent. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, in time. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, having that as just, part of a sex yeah. edu education program, perfectly valid. All for it. It's definitely an option, but it's not completely effective. There should be ways that you can back things up. Yeah. But again, this is this is about controlling behaviors, right? Yeah. And now and, and they're spreading it above and beyond sex education in the schools and what is or isn't appropriate to give to teenagers. Yeah. The, these are these are rules that could affect um, uh, adults who should be autonomous. Married yeah. women use morning after pills. Married women use birth control pills. Grown adults use these things. Uh, apparently, I'm having mic problems. Okay, so uh, we're about to get yeah. a new one. No, mine. Oh, oh, you are. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry, people. Um, <laughs> I can't be having a microphone. Even if I had, you could hear me across the... Um, so this, is, this isn't about valid science. This, isn't about, this, this, is, this is all about fundamentalists trying to control behaviors, which is what they've done, been trying to do for centuries. Yeah. Well, this is back to the age of Comstock, right? Back to, the, <laughs> back to 100 years ago. Yeah. You had Margaret Sanger, you, you had Anthony Comstock, who was our, what the, the morality czar of America, trying yeah. to make all sex education materials illegal, uh, making uh, contraceptives illegal, yeah. and yeah. which resulted in all sorts of horrible consequences exactly. with people using just the most dreadful solutions yeah. to yeah. avoid uh, unwanted pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is the new age of Comstock in the 21st century. I never, yeah. you know, yeah. it's so. inexplicable. Yeah, abstinence-only programs are, are not all that effective, and yeah, these yeah. kind of technologies and these kind of you know medical help should be out there for people mm -hmm. who want to use them. And I, I think partly it's it's people are just afraid that people may be using this as a form of birth control. Well, yeah, and well that is that is what the the after morning after pill is. Well, yes, it is, but. I think what they're afraid of is that you know women are going to be able to go out and have sex anytime they want, and hey, I can just get a morning after <laughs> yeah. pill the next day, and I'll be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Heaven forbid that grown adults should be going out there, you know, doing things that well, they're entitled to do. It's it's like not so, it's have, I mean, like having sex. Yeah, I mean, on one hand, yes, but on the other hand, again, the morning after pill, from everything that I have heard, is not exactly you know you just take it and all of a sudden you're not pregnant anymore. No, no. Or it, you you avoid the pregnancy. It's not exactly a pleasant experience. Just like an abortion is not fun. And so you're probably not going to go out and have sex and get pregnant and say, well, I could just have an abortion. Um, it's not quite oh. that easy, simple, quick, and painless, essentially. Okay. And so, you know, this is not going to be a typical form of easy 
birth control. You're not going to say, oh, I don't need to take the pill anymore. I could just have it in the morning. Oh, well, well I don't okay, need to right, anymore. I, you, I see what you're getting at. Right, that right. Yeah, okay. And that's, you know, not going to be the case. No. Well, so, but, uh, no. Well, it, this, it, this is, ultimately, it comes down to, uh, you know, people morally superior to you trying to dictate how you behave. Exactly. Right? And trying exactly. to make your choices for you. Exactly. People out there saying, you, you, know, don't, for, you don't know good enough. You, yeah. you know, you're not if intelligent talk, enough to make yeah. these decisions for yourself. We'll help you. If we'll, we'll give you the correct answer. And option. if you're talking about 16-year-old kids, that sort of guidance maybe is appropriate, although I would say that it's the parent's responsibility. Exactly. And, and certainly not the government's, and certainly yeah. not some, you know, uh, pompous theocrat yeah. you know, in Washington. Uh, but if you're talking about 26, 36, 46-year-old adults, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, uh, <laughs> let, let them, what goes on in my pants is none of your damn business. Let them figure yeah. out for themselves how yeah. to do these things. Let's educate them and yeah. decide what they want to do rather than just dictating and saying, you obviously don't know what you're doing. Right. Let me help you. Mm. So, so uh -huh. that's, that's not going to last. For your own good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, um, what else have we? Uh, that's it for actual news. Point that out. Um, yeah. But yes, I will get into this. Um, Jeff D. was actually on the show a couple weeks back talking about the uh, New Dow case. Um, yes. Who had brought the Ten, not Ten Commandments, the uh, Under God and the Pledge and California schools and such uh, to the Supreme Court. Um, uh, Jeff D. and our group submitted an amicus brief, or we wrote up some papers and gave it to the lawyer who was writing the amicus brief. Mm -hmm. um, that is now finished. We now have an amicus brief. Yay, us. Yeah. Um, so it, it, type on this is a bit small. Probably not really worth it. Yeah. But see, green paper. <laughs> it's lots green. Of, lots of type. It's very it's green. It's got words of, in it. Lots of words. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, from my smooth. understanding, this... <laughs> From my understanding, this has a fair bit in it actually from Jeff D, um, okay. who actually who actually wrote a pretty significant chunk. Um, but a, but a fair bit of that is used in there, um, and this is actually this is the final version of what's going to be given to the Supreme Court justices um, um, to read over from our side. And what's the day they're hearing? It's March something, right? Twenty fourth. March twenty fourth. March twenty fourth okay. is the verbal arguments. Or Interesting. Whatever. Okay. So, hmm. So that is that. Wow. Um, we do have a PDF of this. Uh, it will hopefully be up on our site sometime soon. Yeah, we'll try to get that up today, exactly for yet. sure. So Yeah, we'll try to get that up. But now, the, um, an amicus brief is, um, I think the, uh, the, uh, the phrase is, uh, it's, it's friend of the court, I think translated, or something okay. like that. Okay. Uh, and it's where uh, people who aren't necessarily involved in the case directly, but who support one side or another, may present to the lawyer arguing the case certain yes. arguments, and then he presents yeah. that to the court. And uh, you know the uh, the, the pro-theocrat position has <laughs> also you yeah. know the, the pro-under God yeah. uh, people they've come up with their own apparently. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm going to try and actually get out there and see if I can find a copy of that one also. Yeah, oh, I'm um, sure. I'd be, it's I'd be really interested yeah. to find out you know read that one versus that this one. Michael Newdow will yeah. will probably have a link to it on his site that's, at RestoreThePledge.com. He that's had true. he had uh, a link links to many of their uh, arguments before. Yeah. And in fact, Jeff D. used that as research for, for drafting his amicus brief that we sent in. Yes. Uh, examining some of the Christians' arguments for keeping under God in the pledge. Yeah. Um, so uh, so it sh should be interesting to see how this pans out. Yeah. If it's, if it's, if it's now, uh, Scalia has recused himself. Yay. Fascinating. Um, although he, it's not he, he really didn't have oh, much not, choice, though. He's not recusing. <laughs> himself from like going on fishing trips with Dick Cheney, but he's <laughs> at least he recused himself from this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if it's um, so if it's four four, it stands. It stands, and uh, could pan out that way. Interesting. Yeah. Right. And if that happens, you're going to have a lot of histrionics from the uh, the Christian right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're not going to quite get it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, okay, uh, I have a couple of things to bring up. Um, just uh, while we're we're gonna in a in a few minutes we'll get the phone number up on the line and then we'll start taking calls and what have you. But uh, a few things, uh, you know the uh, the Gibson movie comes out next week, or is it week after? Like week after it's next? 25th. Yeah, week yeah. after next. And it's it's nuts how much hype this is starting to get. Have you noticed? It's like you can't you can't swing a dead cat on the web without hitting some article about. You know, Mel Gibson defends his movie from, you know, from... It's, it's like every day. There's like this daily promotional thing. And what's fascinating is that uh, 
uh, churches everywhere are just pouncing on this movie. Yeah. With this, they have this attitude like, this is our big chance. Yeah. You know, yeah. To to get our message out, right? Like there haven't been churches in America for hundreds and hundreds of years, and, yeah. that, and like like no one knows, you know, no one's ever heard of this Jesus person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's this well, interesting. <laughs> and it goes back to um, kind of off on the uh, the um, oh what is it? Uh, little cartoons. Jack the chick. Tracks. The chick tracks. Chick tracks. Uh, those are always fun because again they always have this you know. This evil sinner person out there, and all of a sudden somebody comes up and says, "Ooh, did you know that there was somebody who, who lived a long time ago and he, they love you very much and they died for your sins?" My God, no, I've never heard anything like that. <laughs> and it's like a complete moron who apparently uh -huh. insulated from the rest of the world yeah. their entire lives. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, the uh, never heard of Jesus. And and they're won over by just by the, the the most banal emotional arguments. Right? Exactly. And what I found fascinating about uh, a lot of the, the, the pre-release discussion on this movie, at least on the part of Christians, right, is that they're all embracing this movie like it will be this incredible conversion tool. Okay. And, that's, and that's fascinating to me, right? Because I'm sure, okay, to some degree, there are some people who can be converted by a movie, I bet. You oh, know, yeah, there's, of course. There's this Jesus movie that's been out now for about 20 years, which is, remember the video? A few years ago, some clown like spent millions and millions of dollars oh, to mail yeah. this mail video. Yeah. Yeah. To um, I think which I still have mine actually. Mm -hmm. I I got one. I taped something over it, but um, <laughs> but it just of this show. it just seemed to me to uh, to be uh, you know, just a, just a, well. First off, he spent millions of dollars, and I and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what, think of what these millions of dollars would mean to something like you know, childhood leukemia research or something. Exactly. Right? But no, this guy... Give it to a school. This guy thought that the best thing he could do for, you know, the people of the state of Texas yeah. would be to mail them some damn video, right? Yeah. And... From a 70s. And, and a like 70s a, movie. Yeah, of and, it was, and it was awful. I mean, did, did you try to watch it? Have no, you tried no, to watch it? I actually it? haven't. <laughs> Just from, speaking at, from the point of view of somebody who, who works in the film business, it was just bad filmmaking, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, it, just, it just starts, right? And it doesn't really establish a narrative. It doesn't establish character the way a movie does traditionally. Okay. Okay. It just kind of starts. Okay. With okay, like there, this angel appears and uh, it, who's just this guy in cheesy glowing, <laughs> you know, effects, and then it just kind of goes here, 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 and it doesn't really. And and Jesus in the movie never is really, never really becomes a character. Okay. He just kind of. Goes around and goes he'll. Through the yeah, and he and he only ever says things that are directly quoted from the Gospels. And there's nothing. In, there's no scene in the film that plays out like an actual scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, with a with a beginning and a middle and an end and like a, a focus narrative that yeah. leads you places, yeah. right? And, yeah. But uh, apparently, the the uh, the people who are out there promoting this movie say that it's been seen by something like four billion people and has led to all the millions and millions of conversions. Which uh, I've just found uh, you know, really bizarre. Now I can certainly see why an unsophisticated person, you know, say like you're living out in you know the bush somewhere, and you've never seen a movie before, and that's yeah. that's happened. Right? Missionaries have taken yeah, oh this yeah, this film out to you know to tribes who've never seen a movie ever yeah. and don't know what it is, and they present this magical image. Yeah. So it's not surprising that those people might be converted. Yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, Christians being interviewed in the news about this Mo Gibson movie, and they're saying, you know, my goal is to get, you know, X many atheists to come to the movie with me. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, gee, I, I, I want to see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing this movie. Yeah. Okay, seeing this movie is interesting. But, you know, it's a movie, right? Yeah. And I don't think they get that, okay, yeah. somebody who's like a sophisticated atheist, used to debating, understands... You know why? The, you know has actually given their atheism a lot of thought. Exactly. Someone who's a rationalist yeah. and a secularist. No matter how good a movie is, isn't the you know, movie's not going to be a thing that converts me. Exactly. What's going to convert me is evidence. Yeah. Right? Actual evidence, actual arguments. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, and as a, you know, this movie may be one of the most emotionally stirring movies ever made. But yeah. in the end, it's a movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was emotionally stirred by Return of the King. <laughs> Right? But I didn't walk out of the theater thinking, well, yeah. well maybe hobbits really are real. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Boy, if it, if it wasn't for Frodo doing what he did, we might all be under the rule of the Dark Lord Sauron right now. <laughs> Boy. <It's, Yeah. laughs> you, know, you don't. Yeah. There's, um, there's a thing called reality. But, so. but, but at the same time, there are a lot of people um, 
who have a hard time distinguishing fantasy from reality. And they yeah. watch movies, they watch shows like The X-Files and think it's re take it seriously, yeah. which I think is pathetic. Um, but, so... Uh, no. So it remain to be seen. I mean, it, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, you know, the, the hype is going to be really huge up until it opens, and then we'll see what the what what the fallout is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that was just interesting to kind of to kind of bring up. But speaking of what you were mm -hmm. saying in there, actually, I'll just bring this up really quickly. Oh. Um, you had actually mentioned this last week. Oh right. Um, this was. Uh, not Tom Short. I think the guy's name was Tom Short's the Evangelist. Tom Short's right? the Evangelist. Is this is that his name? Jacob, Jacob Spinney. Spinney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, he went to one of these uh, campus uh, revival religious mm -hmm. youth group type things with yeah. a friend. And he's a, he's an eighteen year old high school student. Right? Eighteen year old high school student. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, who is an atheist? He went with a friend. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Short at this at this crusade or whatever it was um, gave him his book, which is five crucial questions about Christianity. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then Jacob proceeded to uh, <laughs> rip him a new one essentially. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, let's put I, it in how, nicer how phrases. It, it is yeah. a, it's a very measured and intelligent exactly. rebuttal to this man's book. Exactly. It is a 19-page, uh -huh. as in, you know, to the border, uh -huh. um, <laughs> refutation of this book, and it uh -huh. is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. The arguments in here are just excellent. The writing mm -hmm. is well thought out. Yeah. It's in good order. It's, I mean, just everything in here is absolutely it's excellent. I mean, when I was 18, I didn't have um, my arguments nearly in that kind of shape. Yeah, I so. mean, it's, it was an absolutely incredible thing to read over. Yes. Um, and, and this Tom Short guy has just run from this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because he went back, he got the book, read it, wrote this, brought it back to Tom Short and said, you know, here you go. Here's my response. Mm -hmm. Tom Short said, you know, okay, I'll get back to you on it. And the next day he came back and said, you tick, really tick, shouldn't tick, be tick. giving this to anyone. Yeah. Let's just keep this between you and me. Uh-huh. It's like, <laughs> yeah, fat chance, bucko. Exactly. Uh, so instead he gives it to... Can't stand uh, the heat. Yeah. Gives it to, what was his name again? Uh, uh, well, James Randi is Randy where I first Randy. discovered. Yeah. Exactly. So, and now it's, and now it's getting around at least one or two websites out there. Yeah. But like I say, it is just, it's absolutely incredible. You know, I think we still have the URL. Um, yeah, we might know, have the title for that. Otherwise, yeah. you might be able to Google it. Uh, yeah. A Thinking Person's Religion. Well, if nothing else, you can go to randys.org okay. and uh, visit it. But I think we have uh, the, the URL on the screen. It's the Jacob Spinney, or, uh, or Jacob Andrews, I think. I'm not sure who Andrews is, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's at uh, jacobandrews.com. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I think we still have the title in the, in the thing, so if... Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, a, it's an absolutely... If Joe finds it, he'll put it up. Excellent read. It's great. Well good. worth the time. If you and, it, if you um, in fact, I think there was, there's a, there's a follow-up on um, Randy's site right now uh, where someone else has written Randy, who read okay. Jacob's bit. And said, I was a student at such and such university back in the 80s, and this Tom Short dude used to show up and would set up his little PA system, his little mic. There's that URL. We're going to leave that up in time for, write, to, for people to write down because we really want people to read this. It's great. Yeah. And he said, um, yeah, you, know, I, you would try to lob questions at him, and he would just duck and dodge and weave and not, yeah. try, not answer you. And uh, So it was, uh, it was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. But so, yeah, remarkable. I mean, it, like I say, if you got some time, go ahead and check out this URL down here. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely incredible reading. Yeah. So, so, uh, so all is not lost in the uh, in the quest for you know <laughs> saving not. saving minds. Apparently not. So well, we're going to go ahead and get the phone number up online in about a uh, uh, go ahead and, and do that for phone calls. But uh, while we're waiting on the calls to rack up, like I said, this live calling show. So feel free to give us a call and ask us questions. Uh, last thing I wanted to chime on in terms of current events uh, were. Uh, was this uh, the gay marriage issue is heating up? Yes, big time. And this isn't really uh, this isn't anything that really pertains to atheism, but it, I think it does pertain, it pertain to the uh, the religious climate in the country right now. Okay, because of course the opponent opposition to same sex marriage is from religious fundamentalists. But uh, and I, and then Massachusetts did its thing, which. Um, you know, the, the, the Supreme Court in Massachusetts basically said, no, nope, you got to let him marry. And that threw the religious right into a panic. <laughs> into a tizzy. Uh, but what no one was expecting was for what San Francisco did. Okay. Whereas the mayor of San Francisco basically just said, we're going to start issuing marriage licenses yeah. to gay people. And, and I think like in the last couple of days, you know, so like several thousand gay couples have gotten married. Wow. 
And I'm and I'm looking at this, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, okay, now I certainly support the right of any consenting adult in this country, you know, to, to be allowed to be married, and and dis discrimination is just wrong, yeah. right? Uh, but I'm I'm a little troubled by what's going on in San Francisco. Okay, uh, you know, this is going to be a position that is probably going to be controversial among people on our side okay. who are watching right now, you know, who are, <clears throat> but because right you know, atheists in general, we, you know, we believe in equal rights, we're against yeah. discrimination, um, you know, we're all for, you know, freedom and liberty and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But I'm looking at what the mayor and, and, and the city manager in San Francisco chose to do, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I really don't see that this is necessarily, at least in principle, much different than what Judge Roy Moore did. Okay. Well, because what did Judge Roy Moore do? Judge Roy Moore says, okay, I don't like the law right now. Okay. 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 So, uh, because the law doesn't let me do something that I think I should be allowed to do. Yeah. So I'm going to go so above you're... the law, yeah. I'm going to break it, okay. and in so doing, I'm going to present the courts with a fait accompli, yeah. and they will have to now make a decision, and yeah. his assumption, of course, was that they would decide in his favor, and they didn't. Yeah. And it seems to me that, uh, okay, the, the fact that I happen to in, you know, agree in principle with yeah. what the so, mayor of San Francisco is doing, so and that I think that... the methods that they went yeah. about it were yeah. wrong. Again, you just cannot, yeah. in, 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 in the system that we have, I mean, if, if this great experiment called America is going to yeah. work, you, we just can't have yeah. you know, public officials going around and just in, breaking the laws that they see fit to yeah. break. Imposing their will on the people. Whether yeah. we agree with that will or not is yeah. beside the point. And, and again, I, and, and I, all those couples who've been getting married in San Francisco, I want them to be allowed to be married. I yeah. want them to have wonderful ceremonies and have great marriages and lives together. That's, but, you know, there, there's a process. Yeah. by which we do things in our country in the legislature. And, and I don't know if it's something having to do with the fact that we've got this culture of instant gratification in America, yeah. you know, that we're just used to this. Uh, but profound social change is not something that, that conforms to instant gratification yeah. ever, yeah. right? I mean, it took years for, you know, what Martin Luther King was trying to do, you know, with uh, you know, trying to get equality for, for, for blacks and for African Americans. Uh, it took... Years were for the suffragettes and for women a hundred years ago, trying to get the vote, trying yeah. to get you know e yeah. equal job rights and what have you. Um, it was it was not a thing that just could be could be legislated by fiat. There had to be this sea change in social attitudes, and it's going to take this uh, for um, for for what you know proponents of gay rights are trying to do. And I'm afraid that what's going to happen is that this is just going to be a setback for yeah. the gay community. This isn't going to help them, because you know what happened with Judge Roy Moore was that what he did galvanized his opponents. Yeah. Okay, all the people who said, no, no, you can't, as a judge, use yeah. your position as a government official to thrust your religion down everyone's throat, yeah. and he got smacked down. And I think that if the mayor of San Francisco, if it was his intent to, yeah. to get the Bush administration and the Christian right to fast-track this proposed exactly. anti-gay marriage uh, uh, constitutional amendment yeah. that they're trying to push, which, by the way, would be the first time ever that any constitutional amendment has ever been passed that like introduces discrimination yeah. into the Constitution, yeah. um, which would be an, a, a stunning thing to happen. But yeah. if, if, if they wanted to make sure that this would be fast-tracked, they couldn't have done any better than yeah. what they did on Friday yeah. by just starting to issue these uh, marriage licenses, which are, not co which are not covered in California law. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I agree with what they want to do. They just, this isn't the right way to go about it. And, uh, and I know that, uh, you know, okay, now, my, so my, if my, my position is that you can't just break laws you don't like if you think they're wrong laws. Exactly. I'm, our phones are, <laughs> they, I knew they were going to lie, but they lit like crazy immediately. Uh, but I'm sure people are diving for their telephones right now, and they're, and they're going to go, Martin, okay, what about Tiananmen Square? Okay, what about, uh, what about the Third Reich? You know, yeah. What about the, 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 the Taliban? What about all these oppressive governments who have evil laws and, and people stood up to them? And um, I've given a lot of thought to that, and I think, okay, I, I think that's a different kettle of fish entirely. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about, now that's an entirely different system of government. If you want to talk about some evil, totalitarian, yeah. uh, oppressive regime that's out there, you know, that, that doesn't guarantee it's any of its citizens any rights, you, know, you can't vote, you have a dictator in power, um, it's all fascistic. You know, no one has no one has no one has a congressman they can call up. Yeah. You know, if you're some poor Chinese peasant living out in the provinces and yeah. under a communist government, yeah. you don't have a, co a congressman you can email exactly. with a grievance, yeah. right? Yeah. If you live under some sort of oppressive regime, 
uh, that makes you walk around wearing burkas and stuff like that. That's a different kettle of fish entirely. Yeah. Okay, now, in, uh, and I know that <laughs> the Bush administration, a lot of people involved, you know, are sort of little Cub Scout fascists <laughs> in training. They, they, they're these wannabe fascists, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it's still, uh, you know, when I woke up this morning, I, you know, America still seemed to be America to me, right? I mean, this yeah. is an election year. We've got Kerry, you know, but, uh, you know, looking good. We've, you've got you know, editorial cartoonists are still allowed to, you know, draw stupid cartoons of, yeah. you know, Bush and newspapers, yeah. making them look like an idiot. Yeah, as much as people they don't get hauled off to prison. As much as people want to say that we are living in a theocracy, yeah. they don't really know. The push is there. What a real theocracy yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, the push towards it is certainly. Uh, on, I don't think it's going to realis realistically happen because, again, you know, the, it's going to come up and be challenged in courts. The, yeah. the fact that there are people in America like Tom DeLay and, and, and folks like yeah. that who might want America to be that kind of country, Judge Roy Moore, yeah, yeah. it's not there yet, and it's exactly. not, you know, and they can keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, and we'll keep fighting. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that if we're going to make this big experiment called America work, we've all got to, you know, we set these rules up, and we got to start playing by our own rules. Yeah. That's yeah. just that's yeah. just fair. Uh, so, I want I want this all to work out in in favor of, of um, you know uh, gays and lesbians not being discriminated against. Uh, but I don't I just don't think that uh, you know we can. Yeah. This is the way to do it. Yeah, it seems kind of anarchic to me, and yeah. I don't think that you know we've, I don't want to see this slippery slope to anarchy. Exactly. In our country, but that's exactly. end of polemic. But that's just my view. That has nothing to. That's not really an That's not an atheist position. Yeah. I'm sure some of our own members are going to call up and heatedly disagree with me, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, that's what we're here for. But uh, you know this this uh, it, it it is definitely tied into the the religious climate in this country, which is becoming stronger and stronger. Yeah. And it's getting scary. I mean, you know, it's getting to a situation where you really, if you're a non-religious person in this country, or if you are to more tolerant than the fundamentalists. It's really seeming like you got to watch your back more and more yeah. every time. But anyway, but you can't just go out and do vigilante stuff. And, and yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but that's wait, wait. civilians or government officials. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start taking calls right now. 477-2288 is that number to call us live. And I'm going to start with uh, who's to start? Richard Online 2, I guess. Hi, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, how's it going? We're good. What's up? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I haven't gotten a chance to call in a while. I wanted to tell Ashley congratulations on his foray into the other side a little while back. Thank that you. was great. <laughs> um, uh, okay, secondly, get right to the point here. The, the movie, The Passion. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I got a call yesterday from my mother, who I've been working on for quite a while. I grew up in a Baptist household, went to a Baptist Christian school, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, I was Baptist. Yeah, yeah, you see, you feel my pain. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I talked to her the other day, and she got an invitation from her church and the Southern Baptist Convention to come and see a screening of the movie. Mm. And they sent this little press pack with uh, the tickets that they're sending. They rented out a theater, apparently. Uh, right. And they said that uh, there were so many miracles happening on the set. People were being healed <laughs> uh, during the miracles. filming. There were miracles uh -huh. of the star of the show getting hit by lightning. <laughs> yeah, but hey, but they survived. But he, yes, but on. they survived. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, so she she's giving me all of this, and I, I've done some research into this, yeah. and I've seen what Mel Gibson's father and all believes and uh -huh. what their church believes, and I started throwing some of that at her, and she gave me the whole, ooh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, I don't know, uh... <laughs> yeah, the hemming and the hawing. Yeah. Now, in, 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 in uh, Mel Gibson's defense, you know, I'll say that, you know, you can't just... The sins of the father do not uh, necessarily fall upon the son, and, and, you know, Mel Gibson is not... Mel is not a Holocaust denier. Uh, this is true. Uh, this and, is true. And so that's, you know... So uh, if there are criticisms to be made of the film, I think, you know, obviously they should be legitimate criticisms. I would hate to see people, uh, you know, there's, I think that uh, the ADL and some of the more militant people who are trying to criticize the movie have, have, have shot themselves in the foot in, in, in right. occasionally in, in tossing out what seemed like cheap shots. Oh, well, your dad's a Holocaust denier, so that must mean your movie sucks. Well, it's got nothing to do with it. Yeah. Right, and um, I'm sure they share some of the same beliefs, and that's all fine. I, you know, to each his own, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, I've been working on my mom for like two years now, and I watch you guys, if you'll pardon the pun, religiously. Um, but That's fine. <laughs> I, and I've used a lot of the arguments that you've brought up because mm-hmm. they're very similar ones that she's brought up to me, and she doesn't know that I'm an atheist. I've kind of kept that under wraps. I've... Mm-hmm. As, um, Not doing a very good job, apparently. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> but, just uh, not using the A word. <laughs> right. Uh, well, she's, she's telling me all about this movie, and she's trying to get me to come down, and she's trying to get me to come watch it, and she's telling me what a wonderful, life-changing experience this would be, and God will work in my life if I come down here and do this. Hmm. Yeah. See, it's interesting, isn't it? It's like it's some, you know, they think that there's a movie will... Make oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's I've actually heard and, and I'm I, I'm sure the movie is fantastic. Cinematography I'm sure is gonna be great. I'm I've seen sure the trailers, it looks it looks well. amazing filmmaking. And, and yeah. I will end up seeing this movie, I'm sure. Yeah. But but just the fact that it's having this much and that the the Baptists are out going, You've got to go see this movie. Take the people from your church to this movie. Mm-hmm. And you know, I grew up in a in a place where it doesn't matter what the movie is. If you're going to a theater, you're going to burn in hell. <laughs> so so yeah. the fact that now I'm hearing this, I just mm-hmm. find that highly yeah. ironic. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that, that they're out there actively recruiting people sure. to this, and uh, it's having a pronounced effect on quite a few Baptists out there anyway. Yeah. It's, well, you know, what, what, the, what the Christians have been waiting for for a long time, is for a, uh, a, a, a a Jesus movie to have major celebrity endorsement. Right. I mean, most Christian movies recently have been just really embarrassing, low-budget, cheapo affairs, you know, like Omega Code and, and <laughs> Left Behind left and stuff behind, like that. Yeah. And, stuff and that Left goes Behind, right to, too, let's not forget. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just this really cheap direct-to-video <laughs> stuff. Right. And they've been looking for some sort of big, high-profile Jesus movie that has one of the top stars well, in Hollywood. You know, Kirk, uh, Cameron, for it. Kirk Cameron said it. It must be true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, That's I'm going to go ahead and hang up and let you guys go. Okay. You right. guys take care. I uh, appreciate, appreciate your... you guys, as always. Yeah, well, we appreciate your input. Have Thanks, Colin. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, it, it, that's... And we like to say, right, because uh, that's what I've been seeing in a lot of these articles, is that um, churches are buying up massive lots. Yeah. They're, they're renting out entire theaters, and then they're, they're just out hanging, handing uh, tickets out yeah. uh, to just anyone to get you to go because they, they think this movie will convert you. So we'd like to say right here and now on the show, yeah. if there's any Christian church in Austin who is planning on like, buying out entire theaters, I, I'm eager to see the movie, and I'm perfectly happy to see it on your dime. Okay, yeah. so... Um, get in touch with the atheist community of Austin by all means, and, and let us, there's there are hey, probably this, some atheists. If this movie ends up converting us, <laughs> yeah, well, good we'll get, salesmanship. We'll pay you part. for the ticket you bought. Exactly. That? We'll exactly. give you your eight bucks back. For the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if any any Christian church in Austin who wants to who wants a bunch of atheists to go see this movie, uh, just to get in touch with us, and uh, um, you know, uh, <laughs> we'll take your free ticket. <laughs> Why not? Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so it's so. This is uh, it, it's just interesting how they've all latched onto this. I've I've heard the movie is just amazingly bloody. Yes, that's just I yes. mean just the the yeah. the gore, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the gore uh, factor. In fact, I've, the the one criticism of it that I've heard from somebody who wasn't just harping on the anti-Semitism thing. Yeah, uh, was somebody who said this this is just two hours of a guy being tortured to death. It's, exactly. Yeah, and it's exactly. just. Um, uh, Good, wholesome so, family entertainment. Yeah, but yeah, and, and, and what is what I find really kind of horrifying is, and this is something I can't relate to, so maybe someone can explain it to me. Okay, there, there are people watching this, uh, like devout Christians are watching this. This yeah. guy being turned into a hamburger, right, by <laughs> scourging and yeah, right, yeah. and blood splattering everywhere. And their reaction is, "Wow, he did that for me." And and I just listened, and and I. I can't. I'm just horrified <laughs> by the by that response yeah. that people have. Yeah. That people think that that's an appropriate. I'm like, ah. <laughs> well, if, first off, I wouldn't want any. You know, that that sort of violence to happen to anyone for any reason. If yeah. I found out that someone was that that was happening for me, you know, I'd be like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Don't do. Yeah. It, it, the the very notion of human sacrifice and, and this yeah. sort of thing is just repugnant. Um, yeah. But it just the fact it's that amazing somebody to me two thousand years ago. Yeah could actually do something that would pay back or yeah. or make right what I have done 2,000 years later. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just the whole thing of responsibility is just well, uh, yeah, for, uh, stupid. Well, <laughs> sorry. Well, just this whole notion, right, that, uh, you know, this all-powerful God um, 
decided that the only way that okay, he's that. mad at the human race, so the only way that he can uh, uh, yeah. absolve the human race for more or less mistakes that he made, being yeah. this all-powerful God, is to send this one guy down who's basically himself in the flesh, yeah. right? Have this guy be horribly tortured and killed, and that'll make everything okay again. Yeah. Seems to, uh, okay, again, seems to me an omnipotent God isn't limited to this one option. Yeah. So, the, so why then there had to be this horrible scourging and sacri uh, sacrifice? Yeah. Um, you know, because, of course, Jesus came back to life a couple days later and, you know, yeah. none yeah. the worse for his experience and then yes. got to go to heaven and... Now second-hand ruler of the universe. Yeah, That's so cool. it doesn't seem like much of a sacrifice to me, but yeah. just this whole idea that someone, anyone, with a shred of morals in their, in their fiber, right, could, could look at a, a film where someone is just being horribly tortured to death and smile and say, <laughs> gee, wow, they did that for me. Isn't that awesome? No, it's not! <laughs> it's not! Someone yeah. being tortured and nailed to a cross thing is not awesome. It's, yeah. not, it's not a thing that I should appreciate ever. Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. But maybe so, maybe some Christian will explain that to me. Oh, and just, uh, and just last thing um, for the lightning strike when yes. Jim Caviezel got hit by lightning on the set, it's like, you know, if you're on a hill, <laughs> and you're hanging up on this, and you're, this big pole of wood, right? <laughs> and you're hanging on it like, with metal all around you, <laughs> and it's stormy. You know, it's, it's not unreasonable odds that you might get hit by lightning. <laughs> Twice, apparently. But he survived, so it's a miracle. Yeah. All right, who's next? <laughs> so it's been uh, hanging on. Line one, Ty is on line one. It's been holding for a while. Hey, thanks for holding. How are you doing? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Well, all, all right. right. What's up? Uh, well, first off, to the last caller, I wanted to say that I was raised Baptist as well, so mm -hmm. I feel his pain. Mm -hmm. But I was watching an old tape of the show when Jeff D. was host, mm -hmm. and he mentioned that at Randall's, they would match your... Your purchase, one percent of your purchase, yeah. will be donated to the ACA. Uh, if that's you requested. Yeah, now uh, that's a thing that we're because of rules on uh, on ACA well, cable I believe, access. I believe the number was five one five eight. If you mention yeah. it to them, yeah, and <laughs> if you could just. I don't yeah, know. Well, we're, we're not allowed, again, we're not allowed to mention yeah, that because we can't do that kind yeah. of thing on this show. We can't advertise ourselves or do deal with yeah. money and anything uh, that has to do with a financial contribution. Uh, okay, but, well, but I, I was just, out of the bag. Well, <laughs> I was just thinking it was five one five eight. You could say to him, I'm not sure. Yeah, but hopefully that's true and everybody will hear and yeah. tell your Andrew, Randall Randall sure, yeah. here. <laughs> we didn't say it. Like your. Right, yeah. but um, but it's still going on. Uh, yeah. So uh, so that's well. That's all I needed to know. All right. Yes. Right. Glad to get it. Five one five eight, I believe it is. Okay, I'm uh, not sure, but you may have to double check with that. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's on the website. I heard it was on the website. So okay, all right. People can well. check in with the website and okay, okay. That, that, that website would be atheist-community.org. Okay, so. great. Okay. Thank all you. right, man. Thanks Thank a bunch. You. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thoughtful guy. <laughs> That was great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> who's next? Celia is saying, hi, you're on the air. Thanks hey for Hey, guys. How are you doing? You're having some kind of like Baptist tent revival because I was raised Baptist too. So, uh, We're just, we should have a support group. We're attracting them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just wanted to call about the religious climate and health care. And you guys are talking about the emergency contraception. Oh, yes. Or morning after pill. Just wanted to... Um, Really clarify something that um, I work in healthcare. We dispense the, the you know, so-called morning after pill, but it's really emergency contraception. But it's basically the same thing as the birth control pill. It's no different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. given like w within 72 hours of unprotected sex. So really, all it is is the same exact thing as birth control pill. Isn't it? It's like high, it's like a higher dose. Yeah, situation. a little bit yeah. higher dose and. Since they're dispensing it now, um, it used to be really unpleasant experience, as Ashley said, um, when it had estrogen because it would really make people not make, make women nauseated but now mm. i mean there's almost no side effects at all so really? it's okay. pretty easy you know in the grand scheme of things um you know all the birth control methods out there it's actually pretty easy but mm -hmm. they're trying to get it um over the counter now and there's a the mm. the epa basically said that they agree you know they think that it should be in pretty much all the medical community out there said yeah yeah we support this we support this but um and usually whatever the EPA, whatever they decide, EPA or FDA. the government. Oh yes, yeah, one of those. Yeah, <laughs> so one of those alphabet soup. Got, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a cold, so I'm a little bit out of it today. But it's okay. Um, so um, yeah, so they basically will. The government is supposed to really follow their instruct, not their instructions, but their recommendations, and they hardly ever go against it. But the mm -hmm. government now is saying, oh no, no, you know, mm -hmm. emergency contraception. No, it's 
that's something that doesn't need to be. It's yeah, too pressure. complicated. So it's kind of like women aren't smart enough to be able to under, you know. Yes, I mean, and it's, it's, they, got to, they have to save you from yeah. yourself. Yes, exactly. And so, I mean, back in the day, even, I think it was 1965 when um, birth control, the birth control pill wasn't even allowed for married women until 1965. So it's just, just the same thing about controlling behavior. And for unmarried women, it was 1971. So, you wow. know, you're exactly right when you said that. But, it, I mean, by that thing, by that logic, no birth control should be allowed ever, like condoms or anything, because, oh, you just might, if you have them in your hands, you just have to go out and use them right now. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, it's a good thing, you know. I mean, <laughs> find have an orgy quick. It's, it's part of life. But, yeah. Yeah. but, I mean, other things that are happening, like the Seton Brackenridge Hospital, you yes. know, they're, they're not allowing oh, yeah. reproductive start, or they're trying, you know, that now they have the pagan ward. That's what they were calling it. It's kind of a joke, you know, the pagan ward, oh, which I, they'll be... Okay you know, providing reproductive services, and yeah. that's not, you know, it's not really what they're calling it, but, you know, it's kind of a joke out yeah. there. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of different groups, like Physicians for Life, that are trying to discourage or dissuade medical students from learning how to, to provide abortions, basically. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so they might, in, in a couple of years, it might get to the point, it's already getting to the point where, you know, you have this right, but you have no access to this right. So it's really not a right then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just, it's all about the, you know, controlling the behavior of people, of women yeah. in particular. Yes. And, um, I mean, if you just think about it from from another standpoint, like let's say there's a, a doctor who's a Jehovah's Witness, and I, I believe, I'm not sure, maybe you guys know this, um, they, aren't, they don't, Jehovah's Witness don't believe in uh, blood transfusion. That's correct. Yes. So what if the person came to the hospital, oh, I'm not giving that person a blood transfusion because... That's against my religion. Well, you know what, buddy? You have no business in health care. Exactly. Yes. If you, <laughs> yeah. you know, get into another line of work, yeah. go yeah. be a preacher or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't be in health care if you're not going to provide a certain standard of care. Yeah. And especially for rape victims. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think emergency contraception needs to be available for everybody, but especially mm -hmm. for rape victims. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean. Yeah, that's just appalling. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, that's that's like I mean a woman would be going through enough emotionally yeah. at that time. Yeah. No, none of that BS, you know. Come on. Just yeah. Make it easy for yeah. me. I've got enough to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just have no business in healthcare, especially in an ER situation. Yeah, well, was that pharmacist planning on helping her support her kid? Exactly. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, nope. it's just... Or ha dealing with the emotional aspects of being raped and, yeah, yeah. all that, yeah. I mean, but Walmart Jesus tried to take pull care this a couple of, of years ago when emergency contraception, um, they didn't want to provide it, but um, they got so much flack for it from mm -hmm. um, people who were, you know, rational yeah. and reasonable that, you know, there's mm -hmm. a boycott and, yeah, so it's just, it's a real bad climate right now for... Um, reproductive rights in general and yeah, yeah it's, just, it's getting pretty scary and Planned Parenthood's getting a lot of flack in Austin actually you no, guys oh may yeah. or may not yeah. have heard yeah, about yeah, it heard that, but oh, yeah. yeah so it's one question though I did have um, yeah. you were saying that the morning after pill is essentially just birth control more so um, yeah, progestin essentially the hormone but if birth control requires a prescription now why would it be so much different for this to not require a prescription? It's, that's a really important issue. Yeah, I mean, um, since emergency no, this, this may be getting may, way too you know medical for you know this show. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I don't yeah, know. yeah. It, it, um, basically, it's really time sensitive, and someone who has a birth control prescription is probably going to have it at home already. But emergency contraception, it is so time sensitive; it has to be within seventy-two hours, and the okay. sooner the better. So. If you're, you know, let's say you're out, you're out Saturday night and, you know, you, you and your boyfriend or whoever you have sex yeah. with, you know, you need that prescription right away. And so having it over the counter or having it not necessarily even over the counter, they could just have it behind the counter, the pharmacist, and they wouldn't, yeah. they could have a standing prescription, which they do for a lot of things, actually, mm -hmm. you know, other types of medication. And it's, I mean, it, compared to other kind of medications, there's very few side effects. So, okay. I mean, it's, okay. it's just something that, okay. since, especially since it's so time-sensitive, it's exactly. really important yeah. to have easy yeah. access to it. Yeah, okay. okay. I know. And uh, and there's conservative politicians saying, yeah, but that goes against our abstinence programs. And oh, so well. we can't. Just nuts. Those, those work so well, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. If it worked better, maybe we wouldn't need this. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, I saw something really funny on CNN. There's uh, yet another, um, you know, high school youth group or something out there and they're promoting the purity thing right yeah and i love how they use the word purity because it's so pompous right exactly it's it's, a, it's this funny way of We're legitimizing you are. it's this funny way of legitimizing the fact that you can't get laid <laughs> by saying, oh, well, oh, well, yeah, i'm pure you know so, so suddenly that makes it a good thing right? or like implying that people are dirty choice. and that yeah. you think sex is bad or evil but what they have the is they have point. these they have these t-shirts right 
and they'd have their little day of purity, you yeah. know. Yeah, so, for Valentine's Day. And they've got a and and they've got a slogan which is the symbol for men and okay. you know what is the circle and the symbol for women. Yeah. And they're like linked, right? Like the circle parts are like this. Okay. Okay. Like the like Austin Powers Mojo symbol is that what you're talking about or? I guess well you know there it's like uh, you know yeah. there's a. The circle with the cross, the circle with the X. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the circle parts are, like, overlapping. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I know. If, it's, if, if, you're, if this there is, like, something... There should be a wall of separation. Yeah, there should be, like, <laughs> there should be, like on, on opposite halos, sleeves, you know? You know? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> so. halos linked up or something, who knows? Yeah, yeah but, um, right, well, uh, you know, we, this is, this is, it's certainly, you're right, it's a watch your back climate. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Walmart. And healthcare, I mean, it's yeah. tough for a lot of people to get access to it, and yeah. it just keeps... You know, I, I just shudder to think that if it just keeps going the way it is, you know, yeah. any religious person can have their, you know, opinion know. on how something is provided, and yeah. we all might not be able to get health care. Well, uh, it's not that well, much. Of a hope, slope, hope we're not going to yeah. hope we're not slipping yeah. down that yeah. slope. Not that but, bad uh, yet, but yeah, it's uh, it's a. Uh, you know, again, fortunately, we live in, in a country where we can fight these things. Yeah. So, thank you thank for calling, you and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Um, yeah, Walmart is has uh, is just an interesting phenomenon, yeah. right? I mean, here's a here's a retailer who will sell guns all over the place, right? Yeah, but they won't sell Maxim magazine. You know, yeah, I know. <laughs> something. It's, you know, figure that out. So yeah, but... we don't want to undermine moral fiber. <laughs> Here are your hollow points. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. James has been holding on line two for a yeah. while. So, hi, how you doing? Hi, pretty good. Right. Um, hey, I happen to have been raised Southern Baptist, and I'm gay as well, so I really feel the pain. Okay. <laughs> but um, the reason I was calling was what you were saying about gay marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm not very popular with a couple of my friends right now because I feel the exact same way. In reference to I, with this becoming such a political issue, and it looks like it's probably going to remain a political issue when there's so many other important things that need to be discussed. Yeah. Um, so it was good to hear you say about that, and you, you made some connections with the civil rights movement. And in a lot of ways, it's like the civil rights movement, but a lot of ways, it isn't. Mm -hmm. But Okay, like, what, 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 in your estimation, are the distinctions that people should know about? Well, um, I, I've heard that people have used, well, just like when we wouldn't let blacks drink at the water fountains with whites. Mm -hmm. And the various different things that were going on at that time. And, and I, I do think that we're being treated like second-class citizens, but no one's forcing us to drink out of different water fountains right now. Yeah. I personally think that in Massachusetts we should have took the civil unions and ran at least for a few years so that good Christians can see that God is not going to spank the United States <laughs> like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing about it, though, is that the gays and lesbians pretty much are the figurehead. I mean, we are the boogeyman to the Christian right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are people in, in the Christian right think that the, the world's going to end yeah. if, if gay people are allowed marriage and, and you know, they are allowed to adopt and what have you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I've never quite gotten that myself, but... Yeah. Uh, um, so I, I just think that we, we shouldn't push that strongly. Um, civil unions, I think, is a great idea for now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can work on the things as we go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a social change that's this massive, it, it takes time. Yeah. And, okay. uh, and it takes uh, a lot of, you know, it, understanding uh, does not come quickly, and it's certainly, certainly not to people who don't want to have understandings about things. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I hope that, the, uh, the, that what's going on in San Francisco right now does not turn into as big a backlash and, and a setback for, um, you know, the su supporters of, of gay rights as I'm afraid it will, but I'm afraid it will. I'm afraid uh, of the same thing, so. So, um, you know, I just want to have, like, you know, equal, equality and happiness for all Americans, and uh, it's, it's just a shame that, that some people feel threatened by that. But we appreciate your input very much. Yes. Uh, anything okay. else you want to? That'll be it. All right. Oh, well, thanks for watching, okay? Thanks, Colin. Take care. All right. Uh, um, Jeremy is on line one. Hi. Thanks for holding. What's up? Um, hey, I, I, I have a question for Ashley. Okay. Uh, it's not specifically for Ashley. It's just a topic I've heard brought up on um, several other shows, mm -hmm. and it was it was kind of um, involving 
archaeology in the sense that it was about the lost ark and shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are, you, are you familiar with any the past episodes? I assume you mean the uh, Noah's ark. Um, well, there was a Noah's. There was where the guy called a, a preacher called in and was talking about how there was a piece of Noah's ark. And, oh and yeah. How justified it by. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've we we've it heard out that tree was actually from like twenty years ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was there. Well, Noah's or Ark forgeries also. Okay. No, yeah, Noah's Ark has been quote unquote found something like seventeen or eighteen times. Yeah, I think one of the more recent and ones was actually some piece of lumber that somebody soaked in like soy sauce for yeah, a couple of days. Teriyaki and, sauce. And that was the thing is, even if yeah. even if you found like let's say let's say you're an archaeologist, right, and you're wandering around some mountain, and you find the remains of some ship. Um, okay, how do you know it's Noah's Ark? Even if it's a really big ship, how do you know you found Noah's Ark? Yeah. You expect, are you going to find registration papers in the glove box <laughs> saying this ship belongs to yeah. Noah? <laughs> sort of. But what, uh, was, what was the question, I guess? So anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the, the question essentially was, fuck you! Yeah, I thought so. Okay, whatever. So that's a, if that's, uh, control room, why are we not on camera one? Um, yes. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> that's the best you can do, dude. I mean, <laughs> so. Uh, all right. Pedro, line, well, line three is no longer online, so, no. so we're done. Okay. Um, anyway, so, uh, the, uh, we're getting new names? Uh, we want to just, uh, uh, again, remind everyone uh, that if you're watching this show on Tuesday, uh, this is a taped episode. This uh, will be a rerun. Uh, reruns of this show play every uh, Tuesday afternoon at 4.30. And, uh, of course, the live show is on Sundays at 4.30. And if you try to call in and you don't manage to get in, you can send us an email at tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, tv at atheist-community.org is your viewer feedback address, and we will uh, answer all the emails that we get. And the best ones, we bring them on the air, and we read them on the air. So, there you go. Uh, we don't have, uh, we lost those two callers, so... Uh, Number right now, overtime. if you want to call in, 477-2288. Uh, here's something you want to talk about watching your back. Uh, here's here's something that's really terrifying. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a new piece of legislation that, again, a couple of Christian conservative politicians have uh, advanced. Um, I think they're trying. I think they're calling this the Constitution Restoration Act or something. Yeah. But this is what's amazing. Uh, in response to uh, the whole Judge Roy Moore flap, and I guess the Michael Newdow case and what have you. <clears throat> listen to this. They want to. They want to pass this bill. Goes like this: They want, they essentially want to make attempts to uh, establish a theocracy in this country, yeah. and uh, they want to make those impossible to fight legally. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. It says um, so, uh, Section One Two Six Zero of uh, this is uh, HR Thirty Seven Ninety Nine says, notwithstanding any other provision of this chapter, the, the Supreme Court, Supreme Court, shall not have jurisdiction to review. By appeal, writ of cert, uh, certiorari, or otherwise, any matter to the extent that relief is sought against an element of federal, state, or local government, or against an officer of federal, state, or local government, uh, whether or not acting in an official personal capacity, by reason of that element's or officer's acknowledgement of God as the sovereign source of law, liberty, or government. Yeah. So any questions yeah. involving God, yeah. and any legal, so, any legal cases involving God, cannot go before the Supreme Court. Yeah. So yeah, if, if, some, if some government official decides to use his office and his power of office yeah. to start shoving his religion down people's throats, you cannot appeal. Yeah. You cannot appeal this to, to, to you, there's no law, there's no appeal under the law that you can make, yeah. even to the Supreme Court. Yeah. The Supreme Court cannot be appealed to. Now, that, this is it right now, here, people. This is, this is the recipe, this is yeah. theocracy right here. This now, is the only thing that could happen here uh -huh. is, again, these thing, kind of things come out of the woodwork when the people in power are supportive to their ideas. Now, let's run with the idea that this through some, you know, alignment of the stars, actually gets throughs. <laughs> no, it would be a miracle from God. And then 10 years yeah. from now, there is a very, very liberal slant to the government and who's mm -hmm. in power. And they say, okay, ultimate Ten Commandments monuments got to come down. All kind of religion schools coming out. No more intelligence on. None of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything about it. They just got to swallow it. Because they can't then bring to court saying, you know, we need to have intelligence on in our schools. We need to have these Ten Commandment monuments and stuff like that. 
All of yeah, it's got to go, and they can't do anything about it. Okay. So. I'm not sure. You're saying that that would be the case under this bill? Yeah. Well, no, this, if, bill, if this, bill, this bill says uh, acknowledgement of God. So it, it's only that that you cannot complain about. Okay. If, so, if somebody were elected to office and, and said, there is no God, then apparently you could complain about that. This, this, is, this only applies to uh, an element of officer's acknowledgement of God as a sovereign source of law, liberty, or government. That's the thing you can't okay. appeal to the Supreme Court about. Okay. If somebody, if some, if some Wiccan were elected governor of, you know, yeah, where, yeah. Idaho, and uh, came out and said, you know, the, you know, the, or the Mother Earth Goddess, uh, you know, loves you and whatever, or you just, you know, whatever yeah. Wiccans yeah. say, uh, well, yeah, that apparently uh, this uh, 3799 wouldn't uh, appeal to that because they're not talking about God. Okay. 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 And uh, so, so uh, yeah, so I don't think that applies. And here's what's amazing. Uh, also, under this provision. Uh, 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 justices, including Supreme Court justices, can get sacked yeah. if they hear these cases. If someone hears, someone says, "I don't like the fact that uh, you know the uh, um, uh, my my mayor is trying to uh, you know pass a law saying you got to pray to God every Sunday." Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, any any uh, any judge who even hears the case can be impeached and convicted and removed. Yeah. This is it, people. This is this is the blueprint for Taliban in America, right here in front yeah. of us. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Now this hasn't got a you know snowball's chance in hell of getting through, but still, uh, yeah. the fact that anyone would even have, you know, the schutzbuck. Yeah, to to do this, <laughs> try to, and put this through with a straight face. Yeah. So so the push is there again. Yeah. But again, we are you know we're still. Uh, this is the, that's why this is an election year and very very important. <laughs> okay. Uh, who's is that? Is that JC? Okay. Jace? Okay, on one is holding. Hi, thanks for holding. Hello. Hi, how you hey. doing? How y'all doing tonight? We're all right, what's up? Uh, first, I want to start off with a question for y'all. Okay. Uh, are y'all dating by any chance? Mm, sorry, we're both taken. Try we're later. Both ta yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? This is the atheist experience, not yeah. the dating line. Yeah. <laughs> but we could be. We could. Yes. But, <laughs> and if we were, we'd, we'd have to go and get married now because they're all doing it. <laughs> okay. And who is that? Uh, I'm on two. Okay. Hi. You're on the air? Hello. Hi. Hey. Thanks for holding. Is this Bob? Oh, this, this is Jim. Jim. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. We'll go. We'll talk to you first. Ah, okay. Jim, how's it going? Pretty good. All right. What's up? Uh, I used to be an atheist years mm -hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. And I studied Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. and did you, did you call out. us a few shows back? No, I haven't. Okay, because okay. we had a, we had another Freemason call us a few shows back. Yeah, and uh, uh, <clears throat> they teach that the deity is light, natural light. Natural light. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything's created from light. All matter is created out of light. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. And uh, uh, um, all right. So, uh, okay, and why, uh, and, and so why should, why, should, why should light be a deity? Uh, uh, that's just what they teach. Okay. I'm just puzzled as to the reasoning behind it, that's all. Well, just because everything's created out of light. Okay. Matter, matter is just light frozen. Oh, it is, okay. But, hmm. but, yeah, I mean, deciding to worship this, you know, different forms of matter yeah. or energy, it, yeah. you know, What's the point? I mean, yeah. Is that is that what Freemasonry promotes? Is is the worship of light, or do you just acknowledge that it's a deity? There is the deity, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. The, the way you see the deity is through light. Okay. All right. Well. Um, hmm. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Uh, okay. And uh, all right, see, I was looking at the wrong number. Yeah, there okay. we go. Okay, this would be Bob on the online. Hi, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, dude? We're okay. What's up? Uh, how many uh, species are under there? Uh, of of what? Just anything? Uh, yeah, of oh. er everything that exists. M millions and millions, probably. Why? Five billion. Okay. Um. Um. How uh, out of how, those uh, five billion uh, species? Uh, how many of them can make TVs and? broadcast over, you know, like we're doing right now. Oh, well, that I know of. One. Just one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, who who is their closest, uh, you know, next in line in regards to the intelligence uh, level? I'm not sure I can answer that. I mean, you'd have to ask probably a biologist or a zoologist. Not a single one. 
Some uh, some might say. Uh, so you're saying well, you're saying you're saying next in line. You're not yeah. saying uh, you know who's who who is well, intelligent. Well, who's next as well. in line and uh, being able to make a TV and, and uh, yeah, okay. So okay. so what's the point? Yeah. Well, about uh, five billion. I mean, uh, actually, I've heard I mean, it's probably twi I think it's like twice that. Actually, maybe about ten billion. When you start counting beetles and ants. You yeah, know, I mean, they're they're, they're they're probably there's probably something like a billion species of insects. Well, five billion. Yeah. Five so, billion. Okay. So and your point is. Uh, well, you know. Uh, uh, five billion to one. I mean, what? So we're intelligent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Who's who's uh, who's uh, closest to us? I, I'm. I, I. I think we've kind of been around that question before. I'm trying to get to the to your conclusion. Yeah. What's, what's, the, the, what's the point? Hey. Uh, uh, well, you know that. Yeah. That's all you can. I mean, yeah. Intelligence is our niche, right? In the in the uh, you know in the in the whole ecosystem. I mean, that's. I mean, if, you, if you want to start looking at things like that, there are other animals that can you know out trump us. Uh, okay, those, think, those animals can can uh, more or less build a home or something like that. Well, well, no, but if you want to talk about you know pure biology, let's look at a squid. Ants? Their eyes are incredibly better than ours. Yeah. Ants well, well, if you want to look at eyes? if you want to look at let's say a, a lion, can pretty much beat the snot out of me any day of the week. Yeah, if you're I mean, talking about physical things, mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing on them. No, yeah. no, mentally, I'm not talking so. about physical. I'm talking yeah. About okay, so so yeah. Okay, so then you've chosen to take our niche in our niche mental, in the world. Mental capabilities. Yeah. So then you're taking the one thing that we're in good at to building. Uh, you know, being yeah. able to build. But again, I'm not. Yeah, we, we don't know what point yeah, you're what, driving at. Yeah. What is the hey, point? Hey, uh, one, uh, one more, one more thing. Uh, Wait, no, 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 no. What is the point? Made a point yet. Yeah. What is okay? Okay. We we've established that human intelligence is unique to humans. So therefore, so so the conclusion is. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, we, I, 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 we assume that you're leading four, up to four ninety nine uh, billion uh, other species. Can't, can't uh, yeah. Do what, okay. Okay. So, big right. numbers. Who cares? Right. Yeah. What? You're so you're impressed by big numbers. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Good for you. Hey, I uh, got another question for you. Are y'all for? Uh, are y'all gay? Uh, we're not. But uh, if we, if you want help meeting someone, I try. Hey, I would um, suggest I'm, the Austin I'm, Chronicle person. You know, in regards to the gay and lesbian uh, marriages, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna marry my, my gorilla. All right. Do that. It's, it's, Good for uh, you. Do that male, because I'm he's probably and, and just as be. intelligent as you are. It's going Take care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should always marry your intellectual equals. <laughs> uh, all right. Anybody else in the last, like, two and a half minutes of the show? We're done? Okay. We're probably close to being done. Um, <laughs> If we can, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a couple names coming in. Well, well we maybe we'll try to take one more uh, in the last minute, and if not, uh, okay. Hi, uh, quick call. Uh, what, Richard? Uh, yes, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the theory of evolution and, and this, how that, about the insects. Okay. Well, wow. we actually don't necessarily have enough time to go into that in detail, but yeah, uh, did you have a quick question? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Apparently didn't have anything good. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, folks, that's the that's the atheist experience. That's the kind of person that rationalists in America are trying to protect this country from. Okay, yeah. I mean, those are the people who are out there trying to uh, you know pass crazy laws and stuff. Yeah, the creme so, de la so yeah, but there's still a chance for America, you know, for smart people to save this country. Okay, and it's called voting. All right, and it's called getting active and participating. Yeah. All right, we appreciate you uh, watching the show today. Uh, we're done. Like I said, uh, we are here uh, every week. 4.30, um, I'll actually be off next weekend, but uh, Ashley will be here and Don Baker will be yep. the guest. And um, reruns a show at 4.30 on Tuesdays. Yes. And again, last but not least, I want to reiterate, tv community.org. That is our viewer feedback email address. Um, and we respond to all the emails that we get from folks. And uh, so write us a letter, and if it's a good one, we'll read it out on the air. Any atheists or atheist-friendly people out there want to come out and meet us? Uh, yeah. Or anybody else in the group? And we have the weekly meetings. Right now it's kind of in flux, but yeah. next week at the, uh, the hell is Posse East. Posse East. On Duval and San Jacinto. Okay. All so right. So that's where we'll be next week about 10 in the morning. Yeah, right. but it's fluctuating and so until we find our, exactly. our regular place, which, yeah. you know, who knows. Um, but, um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a place where we can eat. Uh, yes. Because that's like, tends to be uh, something that people are really into. Yeah. And our, our lecture for. Um, oh, 11.30? Wow, okay. Oh, 11 11.30. Okay, I guess they must not open until then. That must be it. And then our lecture for March will be Ellen Campbell uh, speaking on some subject. And so, uh, just remember, uh, all atheists, free thinkers, rationalists, uh, secular humanists, uh, just uh, we, are, we are living in trying times right now, so just watch your backs. Okay, folks? Um, 
but America is still America, and so we're going to stick up for it and defend it. Okay, everybody, uh, thanks again. Uh, we'll talk to you later on. Uh, thanks a whole bunch for our crew, uh, to, to the crew and to the group as a whole. And until next weekend, remember, Theus, we don't hate you. We just, just think, think you're wrong. Bye-bye. Take it easy. See you next time. Mm. Happy post-Valentine's Day. Did that already happen? <laughs> that was yesterday. Ah, well. <laughs>